Hello and welcome to Sleep Hypnosis Weekly dot com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. And the reason there was a pause before, well, after Welcome To, is I completely forgot the name of the website. Which should be quite easy, considering it's the title of this podcast. But there you go. Um, Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes, as... It may cause sleepiness. <sighs> See, I make these recordings at quite weird times. And I'll be putting up soundproof like studio, recording studio foam pads on my walls or in my living room where I am now with the hope that I'm going to be able to make recordings during the day because the room will be quieter because probably in the last year I've been doing stuff during the night and I don't really want to stay up all night anymore because right now it's 8.35 in the morning I know that's not I mean technically it doesn't matter when I make them because I need to be awake when I make a recording um, and also 8.35 here in the morning could be evening time where you are depending on where you know if you're listening at ex- well you're not going to be listening at exactly the same time that I record it because I've not uploaded it yet but you know what I mean I, if you're in Australia you're like 8.30 in the evening or whatever time So, my plan is to try and make them during the day. Because (coughs) that just seems better for me. Especially with the summer coming up. Having to wait till three in the morning until it's pretty quiet. Although, the, the weird thing is it is quieter regarding you know neighbors and traffic and stuff but the one thing that's really noisy is the train so i've got a train up the road but i don't there's not a train there's a train track where trains go through or over and uh, for some reason they bib their horn it's like mm-mm. But it's really, really loud. Don't do it during the day. But they do it at night time. Not early evening. Not even midnight. Well, sometimes midnight, but it's early hours of the morning. Like that. And admittedly, that's not a very good impression of the train. But I can't do a very good impression of a train trains look very different to me so yeah but uh, also if I did a really big loud screech that wouldn't fit in with the you know the ambience of a sleep session so just to let you know that there are other podcasts that I do uh, also for insomnia and sleep uh, 
Let Me Bore You to Sleep is one. I've just given you a little taste of that. Me just rambling on about nothing. And uh, that's Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. And I've got a Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast. And there's now, is there a hundred recordings of that one? I think. Yeah, it's getting on to a hundred if it hasn't reached it. I haven't made one for about six days. I've had a little bit of a... Quite a lazy week as far as making recordings. But I have been fairly busy on the website, you know, building websites, you know. The backs, not the backside stuff, that's the wrong word, but the... The back end stuff, the, you know, behind the scenes kind of stuff uh, on the website. So it takes, it's quite time consuming. And there's going to be some of you that are thinking, maybe people that haven't listened to this before, maybe people that have, are thinking, are you going to get on with it? Send me to sleep now, and uh, I will get on with it now. But there's something to be learnt from listening to me. Talking about stuff that maybe you don't want to or you're not interested in you know and you know when you're wanting to me to do something else you're wanting me to speak slowly and continuously and focusing on whatever it might be But there's something about that state of mind where you're, well not you, but you know, whoever is, and I'll do it myself, the impatience, the expectation that something should be different from what it is, that somehow our version of how things should be it's kind of difficult to deal with how things are sometimes there's too many sometimes in that sentence wasn't there thinking about it though doesn't that add more pressure on you fighting against reality and we all do it we're all fighting against reality not in a a a seriously Um, mental illness way because you know there are illnesses where reality you know there's problems with reality so I'm not talking about that kind of stuff I'm talking about just general general day to day things And you may think, oh, what's this got to do with sleep? Well, this could have everything to do with sleeping. Because if you've got a mind that is overactive when you're trying to sleep, and there's stuff going on, then... 
perhaps. That needs addressing. Not just the activity, but the content of the activity. Usually I focus just on the overall activity and to reduce, to slow down, not to eliminate because, you know, I don't, well, I don't like the word eliminate, but even when all your thoughts are forgotten, they're never, never forgotten because we have a memory. But it can seem like there's nothing happening at all for a period of time leading up to sleeping. Because clearly the brain is active when we're asleep, otherwise we wouldn't have dreams. I had one weird dream last night, which just shows we're active, the brain is active, the mind is active. And I think I touched upon this last week. If the brain is active, super active when we're asleep, why would we need it to be inactive? when we're going to sleep. And I just put this question to you to ponder. Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't need A mind that is silent in order to sleep. And maybe somewhere along the line, somewhere along the way, somewhere in life, somewhere, we've heard that that's the process of sleeping. With hypnosis, it can seem like the process. It can um, accelerate feelings, reduce feelings, uh, you know, calm your body, calm your mind. Feeling calmer is not the same as having an empty mind. And... There are people that spend a lifetime trying to empty their mind with meditation and they'll go and sit on a mountain somewhere and they'll, the whole, you know, they'll meditate many, many hours a day. in order to get to that point and it's not because they want to be asleep because they want to be awake think about that having an empty mind means being awake but not an empty mind a clear mind because it's not empty the mind is never empty, but it's allowing thoughts to go, allowing thoughts to drift away, not holding on to them, regardless of what they are.
so the more empty your mind is of thoughts in meditation terms the more awake you are isn't that ironic so maybe it's the type of thoughts I say, <laughs> I say maybe I think it's hugely possible it's the type of thoughts that we have that affects the ability to just drift off naturally because really insomnia is it's just constipation it's you know the equivalent to having a constipated anus you're tired, you go to bed you need the toilet, you sit on the toilet but nothing happens the natural process isn't occurring for some reason and it may be due to stress tension it may be you know, different reasons so with constipation what we do you can take you know over the counter medicines I think uh, prune juice is something that you can have apparently I'm saying it like uh, I'm pretending never to have had constipation but I have I've never had prune juice so um, and there's something about that flow again I'm talking about I'm not talking about constipation anymore but the you know the there is that similarity in the sense of a blockage uh, something that's stopping the flow just like on a train you know with the trains going back to trains if one train breaks down that can mess up the whole of the network in that area but not just that area though because it can then make delays the other side of the country not just on the trains but maybe on the planes so it's, you know it can have an effect a blockage can have an effect So it's those thoughts then, the type of thoughts that maybe we're having. That maybe need to be let go. Or maybe it's not the thoughts, maybe it's the thoughts that we're having that's preventing sleep or has been is the idea that we need to be completely silent in our minds completely silent in our minds And I'll tell you something. If you think it's easy, 
it might be easy for some people but my suggestion is go to go to a meditation class and sit for maybe 20 minutes half an hour in a group and all you're doing is just counting the breaths that's it I did that I started doing that in 2002 so we're now 2019 so it's I haven't done it lately, if I'm honest. I do, because I do the hypnosis, I kind of get all trancey and go along with what I'm kind of saying, if that makes sense. Because I'm influenced by what I say to myself. Although I'm saying this to you, I'm also hearing it myself. Just in a way that you of influence by what you say to yourself also by what you say out loud to others it's interesting isn't it when you think about it what we say to other people affects us possibly more than it does the other people and I'm not talking about aggressive stuff just general maybe something that's not quite so positive I love to tell people that I'm rubbish at maths I don't know why I like doing that I don't love it I don't get a a stiffy when I'm telling people you know it's not that exciting but I do get I do have that image of myself based on previous experience to be fair um, but the more I tell other people the more I'm probably hurting myself and limiting myself and locking myself into that little prison that I've uh, made for myself so if you were to tell someone I sleep easily now I sleep really soundly falling asleep is easy if I dream I dream if I wake up I wake up I just go back to sleep it doesn't matter don't have to be asleep for 8 hours solid in a continuous row There's no laws that says we have to be asleep the whole time. We are allowed to wake up. If we need to go to the toilet or get a, you know, get have a drink of water or something, you are allowed to do that. Going to bed doesn't mean laying there like a little statue for eight hours completely unconscious to the world for eight hours or how you know however long that might be the case I think we've all experienced that sense of just falling asleep through exhaustion yeah and waking up in the morning and be asleep the whole time And it's uh, I quite like it, but it only happens maybe a couple of times a year, where I'm just completely gone for the whole time. 
for me, you know, I'll wake up maybe a couple of times during the night and I'll sleep easy. I'll go fall back to sleep instantly. It might be an age thing, but quite often I'll need to get up at least once a night to go to the toilet, to do a wee-wee. And even though I might have been up for a few minutes, when I go back to bed, I sleep pretty much instantly. And it can be examining what is that feeling when you wake up, you know, in the middle of the night. It might just be because of um, you need to for whatever reason, you know. Maybe you need to go to a toilet, maybe there was a, you know. It could have been anything. It's just that, you know, a sound that kind of woke you up. Or maybe, maybe the dream you were having wasn't useful to you. So your, your mind wakes you up to get out of that dream, which was, maybe it's done. Maybe it, the, the usefulness of it has been fulfilled you don't need it anymore, so now you're awake. You wake up and there's not a huge amount going on in your mind when you wake up. And then you just go back to sleep again. So it's not about emptying the mind. It can be about just allowing the mind to slow down, which it will do naturally anyway. But to have that feeling of I suppose not worrying about anything. I mean, it isn't part of the pleasure of being in bed, laying in bed on a comfortable bed, feeling safe. It's a place where, I mean, literally, it's a place where dreams are made. It's a place where you can imagine new things, imagine, you know, how great your life is going to be in the future. Because what I discovered, well, I didn't discover it. It's not like I can, I can't uh, copyright it or sort of own the blueprint of this particular thought. But I realised recently. Well, it's not recently. It's a while back. But guided thinking. can actually lead to sleep so instead of there's lots of different ways to you know get to the point of just crossing that bridge into sleep from wakeness 
Uh, a good way is to just be exhausted, I suppose. That's one way physically. But I don't really do... Uh, you know, I used to work in very physical jobs when I was younger. So sleeping is usually very easy. Just naturally, you know, because of the physical element and uh, exhaustion and everything. But... I find that when I start thinking about like purposely thinking about something my mind starts to slow down on the other stuff So for example, I like to imagine, uh, you know, say I'll, I'll go to sleep, but I'll just lie there and I'll think about the stats. And I know this is a, this is probably quite a boring thing for some people, but for me it's not boring. And I think about the stats of my podcasts and the websites and how it's grown and how it's going to grow and I start working out you know the future uh, I'm boring myself so much I'm going to fall asleep any minute I think just to let you know as well Hypnosis is just wrapping your mind around an idea. Well, not just. It can be a mixture of different things. So, I'll be lying in bed. working out kind of what kind of stats I'll be getting you know in five years time sometimes I even go as far as when I'm in my 70s I don't I don't I'm not there going through each day because obviously that would take hours because I'm such a young man but uh, sometimes I'll just skip forward and say, okay, I wonder what it'd be like when I'm in my 70s and I'm still doing this and I wonder how different I'll sound. And uh, I don't know, I just, I don't, maybe I do bore myself to sleep because I know it doesn't sound very exciting when I say it out loud. But I think there's part of me when I'm doing that as part of me wants to stay awake to work it out because I'm enjoying it because I'm enjoying the feeling the imagination of being maybe being successful or uh, you know having helped lots of people Perhaps just the idea of still being alive, you know, uh, in 30, 50 years, whatever it is that takes me to 70, because I'm so young. And, oh, 20 years, okay. I'm 48 at the moment. I'll be 49 in August. And then, a year to the big. Five O, which is fine. So I think sometimes I'll be trying to stay awake because I want to work it out in my head. 
and I want to I'm enjoying imagining it and I just drift off to sleep so maybe there's something about thinking about nice stuff I'm using the words nice stuff pleasant stuff and you may say why are you using the word stuff it's because we're all so different that a pleasurable thought for you may not be pleasurable for me you know so but it's about you it's about what nice thoughts pleasant thoughts it doesn't have to be pleasurable you know in fact I would say there's some thoughts that I would probably avoid if I'm honest uh, things that may be stimulating like physically so it might get in the way of, of being able to you know, just relax and drift off. Another thing I like to think about is, I imagine winning the lottery, but big, you know, like winning a lot of money so that I can help lots of people. So I have this I suppose like a process because I've, I've had these uh, these little thinking periods for many years and I just imagine you know getting myself a I don't think about the actual win which is funny isn't it I've never thought about that before I never think about winning it I just think about having won it. So it's like what happens next. I don't think about the process of winning or, you know, getting all excited or anything like that. Because I'm laying in bed, I don't really want to get excited or start focusing on winning the lottery. It's more a case of what happens next. So I skip straight to that. And you know, I got this whole scenario going where I have a you know, like I rented my own little, not little, but my personal accountant, <laughs> my little accountant. It, and so we go, or he goes, or she goes. It's, it's a man for some reason, but it doesn't matter. It's not really relevant. It uh, has to be one or the other, or has yeah. It's a human. And he goes with a suitcase to different people from my life, from the past, uh, including, you know, just people maybe that I don't even know anymore. But, and he gives them cash. Yeah, maybe 50 grand and then just leaves it with him leaves a suitcase with them 50 grand of cash and I quite like that idea of doing that around you know with different people that have helped me out and then having like a party or something 
a family gathering. And then, you know, having a suitcase for each person. You know, like giving a million pounds to Andre, 11 million. And, uh, you know, just, it's, I make it, it's quite basic stuff really, I don't, I don't get too exotic with it all, but it feels nice, it's not stimulating, it's relaxing, I find, because it is fantasy. And you may say, well, it's, you may win the lottery. I don't do the lottery, so I can't, I, you know, you got to be in it to win it, I think is their slogan. Well, I'm not in it. That's why the, the lottery scenario is just that. And I don't mind. Because it feels nice. I feel generous. I feel kind. It feels nice. That's that's it. And that's that feeling. It's not something that I try and hold on to. And it's you know, definitely not something I try and push away. It's just there. And I want to I wanna think about more. Sometimes I want to think, okay, who else can I give money to? Uh, and then I'll just... I start to drift away and I'll come back like oh yeah what was I thinking uh, and then I'd, yeah, every time I drift off I drift off for longer and longer and eventually that's it and that's kind of the process of sleeping Because I think that, and I don't know about children nowadays at school, but when I was at school, we never used to got taught about sleeping. I used to get told off for sleeping in class. The thing is, I didn't just fall asleep at my desk. I actually had a fold-out bed. So, yeah. I was kind of a bit too obvious of mine. I thought about getting a hammock. But unfortunately, uh, the teacher wouldn't allow me to put palm trees inside the classroom. You need palm trees with a hammock. And the sea as well. I don't think hammocks are comfortable. Not the ones that are just like you lay in them and they just like and just no. Nah. Although I do quite like rocking chairs. Sometimes just thinking about trivial stuff can be useful as well. Because it doesn't get in the way of that process of just drifting to sleep. Because you know the drifting so you think about something and then you get distracted your mind will be distracted and 
then suddenly you kind of wake up and it's like oh I drifted off and you're back and it's not long before you're back drifting again but this time for longer and then you're back and each time you drift you go deeper and it lasts longer and that's very much like a a hypnotic induction which is what's it called fragnate what is it called fragnation or not defragnation <laughs> defrag that's the that's what you do you used to, I don't think they do it anymore but it used to be a defrag on the computer where it would do something I don't know but fractionation that's it fractionation Where this is where you close your eyes you know I talk to you and talk about maybe focusing on your eyelids and your forehead back of your neck and chest now open your eyes and you know I don't want you to open your eyes now but it would be that kind of thing and then close your eyes again and go down and each time the person closes their eyes they go deeper and that seems to be what the our minds naturally do with sleep you may wake up and drift off then wake up again drift off and it happens when I've meditated in the past you know the counting down or counting to one to ten on each out breath you know it's like one that kind of thing but after doing it for a few minutes sometimes I get completely carried away with my thoughts And then I'll become aware, like, oh, okay, what am I doing? That's it. And then I'll just become completely and in meditation that is a sign that if you notice that you're doing it and you go back and count from one again noticing it is the that's a great sign that you're doing well because some people think that you should be able to sit down in, in meditation completely empty your mind first time and for it to stay that way forever even people that do it for many hours a day the fact that they're still doing it means that they haven't reached that point where there's no activity and again they're they're attempting for being awake not being asleep meditation is not sleep unless you do it right then it can be a wonderful sleep I've fallen asleep if I meditate laying on my back that's it I'm going to sleep not because I want to but because that's what naturally happens 
when I lie down. So that could be something you could try as well. And in bed, you could just get up to 10. And got way about breathing. You breathe in anyway, you naturally. You don't need to count the breaths as far as. Yeah, actually, you count the breaths if you want to. So basically, every time you breathe out, you count. Two. Three. Four. You know, and so on. And what happens is... It's so boring... And tedious... Unless you... You get a kick out of counting to ten... starts to just slow down really relaxed really calm Because the mind, your mind, knows what's needed. It can do it on its own without involvement from us. Just feeling calm is nice. It's just so relaxing.
so calm. Feels nice. 